watching the Gigabyte Dota Masters tournament, and right now we have Ice on the Radiant. They're up against <laughs> Big Plays on the die. Now this is, hopefully, well this is going to be the first game that Big Plays actually gets to play in this tournament because they've already had two walkover matches so far, which is kind of sad, but hey, you know what, it happens. And Ice, of course, the wild card, the hungry wild card players, the wild card team up in here, ready to try and win some prize money. They've managed to fight their way through an open qualifier, but straight up gods, we've had a band, we've had the Darkseer band. Oh, and this is, I think, Big Plays have seen a few ISIS games. They've been playing with Darks here most games as a side lane solo, so we're going to see them banning out here. Ice also known for picking up some hard carries. They played a fantastic anti-mage where they beat Tong Fu and also picked up Morphling on a couple of occasions here. So we're going to have to wait and see what Big Plays decide to ban out as we do see a profit ban as well coming from Ice. Yeah, well, I don't know if he's really super worthy of the first ban. Then again, then again, I mean, we've seen him do some nasty things. It's that mid-game area where he starts pushing really, really hard and starts becoming, oh, even towards Lagan, where he just keeps every single damn lane pushed. It becomes very difficult to mount an offense without actually risking trading a Rax or having to decide whether or not you want to pull back and defend or continue pushing. is very annoying. But we've had the Brewmaster get banned. I mean, it's interesting. We've, I mean, last yesterday, we didn't see many Brewmaster banned. In fact, most people, most teams were just going, you know what, don't care. They were worried about Lycan, but not so much about the Brewmaster. Yeah, um, definitely agree. Lycan is sort of a higher priority. Um, teams just aren't... A, lo a lot of teams don't have someone who can play the Brewmaster. He's a very micro-intensive hero, and I think you'll see some teams loving him, picking him up right away, right off the bat in some, some drafts, but other teams who just completely ignore him. In some ways, he's a lot like Chen, where you have teams who play him and teams who don't. Mm. I should mention that we've still got um, the boss in the background. You can hear him yelling on his phone, but the Invoker getting bad now. Not too surprising. He is definitely a very strong utility hero. And can just really, and you can play him in very, very many ways. I mean, if you want the like, AoE crowd control, you've got that. You've got the Quace, you've got the Wex build with Tornado and EMP. Or you can just sort of farm up that damage, get a bit of EMP strike. Oh, not EMP, sorry. Get the Sun Strikes happening around the map. But of course, those pure damage, that pure damage nuke. Just assisting ganks all around the map, it's fantastic, really helps swing fights, and it's just very unexpected as well. But I'm kind of expecting Lycan to get banned out here, just because he is definitely still a huge threat in this game. Although, I don't know, we haven't really seen him, like, we've seen Lycan slip through a couple of times, and every single time he's slipped through, he hasn't really been a dominant force. In fact, I think we haven't seen him pick up a win so far. Yeah, Lycan has struggled here and there, and so far it hasn't been banned out yet. We do see the Muffin Man captaining big plays. They have the first pick, so if it's left in there, I think they'll first pick it and try and use that. Tyranny does play the hero um, quite often, as uh, right now they're thinking about what hero to ban up with their last ban. Invoker's being banned. They're going to ban up the anti -age. I, I like this ban. I mean, Ice used it. Bruce Lee, the carry player, used it very, very well. And they're probably thinking, okay, don't give them any opportunity to use it again and maybe go for the Lycan first pick. If it's left in the pool, if it's left in there, I'm, I'm almost sure they will first pick it. It's up to Ice whether or not they leave it in the pool here. As there's a few other heroes still in there as well. Heroes like Chen, who I believe will see Cynical, who is fairly known for using him. Back when he played with Absolute Legends, he, he played Chen quite frequently. So um, it's definitely a possibility as well. So right now we're going to see big plays either getting the Chen or the Lycan with their first pick. I don't think they're too worried about Ice using the Chen, though, if both are left in the pool. So they'll just go with that first pick Lycan. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll finally see him unleash his inner beast and actually deal some massive damage because, like I said before, really hasn't been that successful. But one more ban here for the Radiant side. The question's... I know, I know Bruce, Bruce Lee's actually played a really mean Morphling as well. I'm just wondering if they'll grab him up instead of seeing... Oh, Bruce Lee's disconnected. Oh, no, he's not the banner. It's fine. I'm just wondering if they'll put more Bruce Lee on Morphling again just because Ice did make heavy use of that in the open qualifier. Uh, they did do well with Anti-Mage as well, but... They also really leaned heavily on their Morphling, and Bruce Lee did actually cause some serious damage, but they have actually banned the Chen, so it looks like, there you go, you were completely correct, Gods, like in first pick. Yeah, I'm um, not really all that surprised. I'm also going to have to pick up some heroes to lock him down. I mean, heroes like Beastmaster are fairly good at that. Um, you also get the map control with him, but we haven't seen Ice using that at all, and I think they may just go for Morphling, maybe, later on in the draft to try and just sort of out-carry him, make sure he gets a safe lane. We've seen them use... Crystal Maiden Earthshaker as their two supports quite a lot. I mean, they ran the CM anti mage lane against Tong Fu and then had the ES with, I believe it was a Windrunner in this other lane. Um, and I definitely think they're going to be, look, be looking to pick up the Windrunner nice and early here. So that gives them some strong lanes. And they're going to go right off the bat, Lone Druid. We, you have not seen this Ooh. hero at all. And I, I don't, I'm surprised I have picked him up. I haven't seen them use it at all. They've always favored the anti mage, the Morphling, and they will go with the Windrunner. So no surprise with the Windrunner pick, but Lone Druid coming out of left field. Well, I saw him in a couple of the PD2 uh, US matches yesterday. Didn't really, uh, didn't have a huge effect. Again, just it was a little like he got about I think it was an 18-minute radiance. wasn't 
I don't know if it was just a little bit too late, but the other team were controlling it, re like controlling the game really hard. They had a pipe up and everything ready to go, so the Radiance just, it was a little bit too little too late. Just didn't get have the effect that he wanted, and they didn't wind up winning. Although the Bear did he get off some, I think the Bear in that game, the Spirit Bear was an MVP just because it was getting some ridiculous procs. I think it proc like yeah. three roots, and I it hit three, it just went attack one hero, root, attack another hero, root, attack another hero, root, just got three in a row, and it was, at, and like the players were just screaming absolute bloody murder over the chat because it was, it won them the fight, that fight. But in this case, yeah. you know, we'll see what it could do. They have grabbed the win run, a very strong hero. Vengeful Spirit also being picked up by the dire side. I'm just wondering if we'll see. I, I think she's a good support hero, but I mean, then again, we've seen a few, we've seen a lot of teams actually lately run her as a sort of a utility semi carry and just bring her along for that damage. Or they actually give her farm. And I not, think it's not just because they wanted to have damage, they just wanted to be a little bit more survivable and have that damage aura for the push when they're ready to go on about the mid game. I think more likely than not, we're going to see Vengeful Spirit played as a support hero. They're going to go with the Tide as well for that big AoE team fight. Another hero which you've seen used both and as sort of carry hero, not carry, more as a sort of utility hero to farm up the quick arcane pipe or in the support role. And this could be a sort of utility. I think more likely they're going to have Tide as a farmer than the Vengeful Spirit because getting up that pipe can be very useful, especially if they want to go for that sort of mid game push with Lycan. And uh, we're going to have to see what they want to do. I, Vengeful Spirit, I think, most likely is going to be played as a support hero. These, this, that's more, there's a few teams known for sort of doing that, such as SQL. They like to run the Vengeful Spirit as a sort of semi-carry hero. And uh, we're going to see Earthshaker picked up by Ice. No, not at all surprised by that. And that's going to give them some nice, fairly solid lanes as we're going to see the next stage of bands coming up now. Interesting to see what they pick off at the moment. Well, both teams sort of have their supports settled. Right now, the Dire at the moment, kind of missing a solo hero, a couple of solo heroes. Neither of them, like, I assume, oh, the it depends. Have you seen big players run this much, the Lycan much, and do you think they'll jungle, or do you think they'll lane the Lycan? I definitely think they're a team more likely to lane it. Um, they're, they're one of the few teams who sort of follow the, the Chinese philosophy when it comes to their bands, picks, and lanes, which is, if he's an important hero, you don't put him in the jungle, because he's not going to farm as fast there. And we're going to see them ban up Beastmaster. That's one hero can lock him down. They could run him as a solo hero. I mean, sometimes as that safe lane solo, if he's up against a Windrunner, he actually does okay 1v1 versus Windrunner because you can just harass the Windrunner with those wolves. And Tyranny has played a lot of safe lane solo like and against heroes like Marana, Windrunner. And uh, yeah, I think, I think more likely than not, it's going to be laning simply because it, it farms faster there. Or if they're going to put it in the jungle, they'll lane it till it gets level 3 or 4 and then send it to the jungle once because those early levels is where Lycan in jungle really struggles. Yeah, it's just the level 1 wolves are really, really pathetic. I like the Beastmaster man, though. Getting that roar off the table, of course, it's a really big pain in the ass. Plus, of course, having the Hawk to scout you out, if you're busy trying to jungle, even when you're about level 6, you can get locked down. You can get shut in by bitcher traps or whatever. It is very, very frustrating to get scattered. Constantly have your jungle invaded. But Lashrac being banned by the Radiant side, and Ice getting rid of him. I'm just wondering... I'm yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, just a hero we've seen being picked up so much, although I don't think it'd be what big players would want to go with. They've uh, got the Tide Bands. They're going to pick up some sort of solo so, slash utility heroes. I mean, heroes like Queen of Pain still in the pool. Um, I know Get, Get Lost, or he's playing under the name High, um, is, uh, he, he likes to use that hero quite a lot. They'll go for some sort of range utility solo heroes. They probably want a hero that can go for the pipe and mech, and I think Enigma is definitely a hero that big players are maybe considering to run, especially as a side lane solo, or even as a solo mid hero. Um, if they want to put that Lycan in the jungle, or even in that safe lane, they could still run Enigma as a nice side lane solo. I see people, again, trying to rag on my clothes, saying that I'm wearing the same thing 10 days, or I am not, you terrible trolls. But, Broodmother being banned up, of course, very strong side lane hero, very strong solo hero as well. And, I mean, right now, well, I say could use some solo heroes. They've got, I mean, they've got the Silo Bear, who will probably, I mean, he may want to as a solo, may try and farm him, but I, I think they'll probably give the uh, Silo Bear a bit of a solo. But at the same time, they could use a bit of... They could use a good... Unless they're planning to actually throw the Silo Bidman, I guess we'll find out. Also, I'm not really sure where they're going to throw the Earthshaker just yet, but it is down to their last ban at the moment as to what they want to pick off. They also could use another support. So I'm just thinking... They, I mean, we've got stuff like Crystal Maiden left on the board. We could see something like that get picked up. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, they've used a lot of Crystal Maiden with that DS, another hero which I, I don't think Ice have done all that much is the AA, as the ES-AA sort of combo, you get the sort of the nice latch on with the Fissure, the Cold Feet, but I think Crystal Maiden, I mean, you, we've seen it, them use it time and time again, and big plays, I think leaving Crystal Maiden not too big a problem, they just want to ban out those annoying 
um, the side lane solo brew, which is a hero that they can't really deal with with their current picks. And uh, the Beastmaster, of course, does have that great lockdown, great scouting with that Hawk. Although, I mean, often Beastmasters don't even get the Hawk nowadays. Sometimes you'll see the Axis plus Aura go really? for a mid-game push. Okay, yeah, fair I, enough then. AL used that quite frequently. They had solo mid Beastmaster back when they played that sort of 15, 20-minute push game where they get the pipe and make as fast as possible and go push. They'd run Beastmaster solo mid. He would rush the pipe and go for Axis and Aura not even getting the Hawk and Kobe, simply because it doesn't help when you push. I mean, the vision from Hawk, sure, it helps out a bit, but uh, in general, it's all about the aura and the, the AoE from the Axis, as they were going to see. Enigma picked up, likely to be the side lane solo here, unless they want to run it in the jungle with a VS tide lane, but I think that, that would just be too weak, because they need the Lycan in either, probably in the safe lane, and that means you can't really send the dual lane with the VS tide to bottom, so I think Enigma will be that solo bottom hero. The VS tide likely to be with the Lycan at top, and then they'll get some solo mid hero last. I mean, even heroes like Pugna, Shadow Shaman, still in the pool, both possibilities here. Yeah, well, Raster, of course, really damn strong hero. And I mean, I like the fact they've grabbed the name. It will combo nicely, just the pet spam. The Shadow Shaman, though, getting picked up by the Radiant Sun, ice grabbing him, and he's definitely going to give whoever wants up mid some trouble. Queen of Pain has been banned. So we won't see, well, we won't see any possibility of her being run by the dice at the moment. But the question is, what are they going to grab? They could definitely use with that Stolen mid here. I mean, we still got stuff like Storm left on the board. Oh, what else we yeah. got? I mean, we got, I mean, even Puck could work. There's, when it comes to Stolen mid heroes, there's almost endless possibilities mm -hmm. because of it being mid lane, being near your tower. It's always going to be almost always a 1v1 matchup. So, I mean, heroes are somewhat endless. I mean, you could even throw in an Ancient Apparition Stolen mid here. We saw, I believe... Was it DK running that um, yesterday in the DK versus E-Home game? And you just get the levels, you shoot the Ice Blast off to the side lane, look for some kills. Um, so something like an AA Solomon could easily work here. There's a lot of possibilities. They're going to go with Lich, so Lich, ooh, this is interesting. I get, I'm guessing that Tidehunter is going to be played as a um, semi-farmer now with the Lich and Ventral Spirit as their two supports here. But yeah, Lich will give them some strong lanes and also help deal with that Lone Druid with the Frost Armor later on in the game. And even the Chain Frost, if you catch up... Lone Druid by himself with his bear, it bounces back and forth, takes him out very quickly. Yeah, it's always hilarious to watch him get ganked by that Chain Frost, especially if he's just busy trying to jungle, just biting his own bits, <laughs> and suddenly, Chain Frost out of nowhere, insta KO, but one last pick for the rating, so I'm kind of expecting one last support, and they really could, unless they're hoping to shoehorn Windrider into that role, I mean, even, I, I suppose, you know, obviously Absolute Legends are well known for running their roster as a support, Snoopy does it, it's one of his go-to heroes, and they have picked up the Ancient Apparition, I'm kind of expecting Ancient Apparition in this case to be the support, though, I mean, we did see, yeah. of course, we did see the AA, run by, oh, I can't remember if it was, it was, I think it was DK yesterday, they were running the AA solo, you were right, but it was very effective, and this is something I've seen back in Dota 1, not so much in Dota 2, as B-Boy has just disconnected, oh wow, was that legit? They're down to one um, second. I think we may have to remake. That might not have been a legit pick. The AA, no, I believe the AA was a legit pick, it fits, yeah, they've already, they've already picked. Oh, I just noticed their clock was down to one second, maybe... I'm not too sure what is going on. No, I believe that AA was a pick. It fits in. It's going to run with the, e the AES as their other support. I think the CM would have been slightly better simply because it is AA, underfarmed, underleveled, uh, can sometimes not offer as much as the CM. CM, you're guaranteed to have the disable from Frostbite, the slow from the Frost Nova, where AA, I mean, the cold feet, not always going to latch on. Okay. It looks like we are going to have a... I'm not quite sure what he's doing. Maybe changing net cafe. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. We could have... A relatively long pause here. Oh god, he better not. If he goes to another cafe and has to re-update Dota 2. <laughs> oh no. Really? Alright, let's, let's just be hopeful. Let's be really, really hopeful. I do like... I really do like the lockdown... Well, then again, I suppose they're currently really reliant on a couple of stunts. Reliant on a couple of big... Like... Early team fights are going to be a bit of a bitch. I mean, they've got three really long cooldowns. Yeah. Like, before level yeah. 11, that's going to... I mean, even after that, Ravager, I'm pretty sure, stays 150 seconds. I think it's like 180 for Black Hole. Yeah, it is. Well, it starts for 200. Jesus. That's quite some time. So, yeah, really, really long cooldown. So, if they whiff a couple of vaults, they're going to be very, very vulnerable if the Radiant side decide to push. But, I mean, they may not because they've got Silo on the team. They may decide, you know what, let's just turtle up farm, get him some items, and just hold on. They might try not just to make not any... Because... If they make mistakes, if they make, because Lycan's game is going to be in the mid game. If this goes to late, it is going to be tough for the for the dice. Yeah. Just because Solibear is such a damn good late game carry. 
Oh, he is. It's not a pure like Gammon, because he doesn't, once you get the Radiance as well as the Assault Crest, he doesn't actually get much bigger. He can get more tanky, but his DPS does not sort of start skyrocketing. Um, but, I mean, yeah, definitely I agree. The Dire team, the Lycan here, can only get so far. The Lone Druid is a nice hero to lock him down with the Entangle. And then heroes like ESAA, those heroes can sell a lot better into the late game than heroes like the Ventral Spirit and the Lich as uh, we're going to have to see what they want to do here. The fact that we've actually got um, Cynical playing the Tidehunter, so it makes me think we're going to be seeing a Tide on support, because Cynical is sort of known to be a main support player. And T-Duck on the Lich could be run as a solo hero. I mean, either soloing up the mid lane or that side lane. We'll have to wait and see, as uh, this is going to be interesting to see just how they want to land this. There's a couple of different possibilities, as they've got, yeah, Tide vs Lich. All three can be played as support. I mean, the Tide vs both can be played as sort of utility semi-carries, and the Lich also a possible solo candidate as uh, the Radiant team, unfortunately, having some problems here. Mm, it is going to be very frustrating, but we'll see what can happen. Do they get back to us on how long they're going to be, possibly? No, I'm, I'm messaging them now. Oh, wow. Cynical calling himself bad names. Bad Cynical. I think we've also got some... Okay. Apparently, Chups is the god of Dota and the herpes of LOL slash Hon Scum. All right. We lost most of the ice guys. In fact, all three of them. Or all of them, have we? I imagine maybe those three were all at the same internet cafe. Actually, no, I'm not too sure. So apparently Master Sparky wants to see you naked, gods. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Well, he obviously hasn't found my home videos up on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> are we recording here? <laughs> Maybe. Sorry, right, that was it. Nimrod, I agree, Dota is, a, Dota is a game that can hurt your feelings for sure. Apparently we can draw on the map now. Can we draw... Um, yeah, I, no, I, I saw that in one of the updates, but I have not been able to actually do it yet. Maybe it's testifying only. Can you see pins, my pins on the map? No. Okay, okay. so I know you can never see other broadcasters' pins. Can you see my drawings? No. I'm going to see my drawings. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know quite what that was. Maybe it is the test client. But they've added, they've already added the PL since then. So True. Apparently you're meant to be able to draw lines on the actual game itself. So. Right, they're connecting mm. now. So it shouldn't be too long. Yeah, B-Boy was messaging me saying, soon. Wait, done soon, la. But that's, that, that's, a, that's a story I've heard all too many times. Oh, yeah. Soon. Way Almost too many done. Times. I just noticed Lone Druid has he I think he uses that little sickle when he goes into bear form. Just notice that on his back. Yeah, uh, I know well Tyranny's obviously their car like their go to character, but what about Zimuffin Man? Does yeah. he have a specific role in this team? He's generally the support player. Um, he may play sometimes sort of a utility hero, but I I'd say he's a support player. I know T Duck prefers himself to play those solo roles and cynical I'm only sure we're playing a support, so I'd say Cynical and Zimuffin Man are the two support players in general, and uh, T-Duck likely to be their sort of side lane solo player. Um, or possibly, I mean, they've got both Lich and Enigma. One of those heroes, I assume, will be going mid lane, so it could be an Enigma solo mid with the Lich soloing that side lane, just trying to deny as much farm as possible from the Lone Druid. The problem is, if Lich is solo bot against Lone Druid with, like, the ESAA roaming around, they can get some kills on Lich, with some smoke ganks and then even push down the tower. Lone Druid has a lot of early game pushing potential. I think even without smoke ganks, just because Fissure and Cold Feet are going to cause all sorts of hell for him, he will get shut down. And I mean, if the bear gets on top of him, Proxy Root, it's just pretty much like... We saw yesterday, actually, a Lich got killed just because the bear just ran along past him, smacked him once, got the root proc, and then he died to a creep wave because he couldn't get away. It was just ridiculous. Like the bear just hit him once and then ran off, and he died to a creep wave. It's, it's not a very tanky hero, it's particularly. It's very squishy, so I'm, I'm very worried if he's up against two heroes plus a, well, three heroes plus the bear jumping him, he's, I think, going to just die instantly, pretty much. It's going to be very difficult for him to escape, especially without any kind of stun to defend himself. Yeah, uh, it's one of those heroes that is very easy to gank, although <laughs> big plays, I mean, they've all they've done is show up on time, and once again, we're seeing... It's all it takes. Um, I know, I know. Um, have they reconnected now? Um, I can't actually tell. Um... B-Boy has reconnected. They're still waiting on and Bruce mine, Lee. Mine as well says they're as... all in. Yep, Bruce Lee just reconnected. Yep, they've all reconnected. So right. it's Apparently we want to shout out to like Julia Gillard. I'm not sure why. 
Oh, nope, what? They're not ready. Oh, what? They all reconnected, but apparently... Still not loading. Still yeah, it's one of those things... When it says you've reconnected, it's still like another 5-10 seconds before you actually get in the game. I see people saying some bad things in the chat. Terrible things in the chat. Oh, boy. So, I mean... What is this now? This is like the 6th, 7th? This is the 7th day. This is the 7th day which we have had the game start. Well, actually, I lie. We had one day start on time, but that's because we're doing a replay <laughs> cast. That doesn't really count. That doesn't yeah, really count and at all. The, the match after it started a bit late, I believe. Yeah. We, yeah, that was the Invasion Red game where they had to update as well. So the first live match of every day has started somewhat late, unfortunately. I don't know. Ice have let me down. Ice have definitely let me down. I'm, I'm all my hope now pinned on giggles and dustbin. There we go. They're actually in. We've got five players. Okay, now we should be good to go. Maybe. As I'm not sure. Is that yellow? Is that, I don't like the fact that yellow and that dirty sewage color, cynicals color, are so damn similar. It's hard to tell which is which for the pings. Maybe I'm just colorblind. Yeah, I don't know. No, I agree. I agree that the what was in. In uh, Warcraft 3, it was grey. It's not, I don't know, it's not very easy to distinguish. It's not grey for sure. It's kind of this greenish, greenish tint to it. Yeah. I, don't, I think it just should be like a fluoro green or something. You could tell that apart from the dark grey with real ease. Yeah. Yeah, they just need to get some completely different colour. But they're kind of, I think they're trying to keep with the theme where the dye here, the dye colours are all kind of darkish, whereas the radiant colours are all a lot brighter. I don't know, make it black then. Black would work. Yeah. Absence of oh, the absence of light. All right. So the team's rolling out. Cynical, contrary to everything I have said, looks like he is going to be playing a semi carry slash farmer tight. He's got the stout shield as well as the ring of protection. Z Muffin Man and Tita Lich and Ventral Spirit, the two supports. Lich going for some early century wards, which makes me think Lich is going to be at the top lane using that creep pull. As we're looking for, at a bit of a potential clash here at bottom, as yep. Z Muffin Man will be looking to block this ball. Well, they just skulk around. They'll probably just block the pool and then back up. I don't think they'll try and force anything, but it doesn't surprise me too much that they're trying to get the, far, uh, the tide farm, just because I really think that they're going to try and push early, because they don't want to go to the late game, and there's a lot of magical damage. Like, they don't want to get hit by a good Ice Blast, they don't want to get hit by a good Echo Slam, and not have that pipe slash mech up and running. Like They're probably going to have they're probably going to have the Enigma rush the pipe, I think, and then Tidehunter is a good candidate for rushing that... Oh, did, I just, did I say pipe or mech? The Enigma should rush the mech, and the Tide is a good candidate for rushing that pipe. We often see that on him when he is yep. played as a farmer. Yeah, and as it stands, I think they're going to be running Lich and Tide at bottom. Um, actually, no, who? someone needs okay. to go mid. It's Tyranny actually... Sol yeah, Tyranny is going to be soloing the middle lane against the Shadow Shaman with the Ventral Spirit support. Top lane is going to be solo Tidehunter up against the Windrunner. does have both Stout Shield and the Ring of Protection to get basically to stop a lot of that harass, but he only has the one salve on him, and that's going to make it a bit hard if he does get harassed down a lot. And yeah, Tyranny at the mid lane. This is not quite what I expected. He isn't AA there. Maybe AA will decide to stay mid just to pressure him as they don't want that Lycan getting a lot of early game farm. Lycan not using those wolves quite yet to help him last hit. Well, they're not going to be that effective. I think he's just hoping that Zamafa Man can back him up here if he needs it. What did he go for? Oh, it looks like he's going to go for a quick bassy. Not getting zapped there, actually. B-Boy just using that to see us at the moment. And this is going to be one hell of a rough lane for Cynical. I'm honestly not yeah. sure if he's going to be able to survive this. He's up against three, well... He's going to be up against three stuns just because Cold Feet is going to proc with a backup of two stuns plus a possible slow as well. So I don't think he's going to be able to survive, survive that. Or maybe if he gets an early level in Kraken Shell, it might, might help him out. But then again, he doesn't have that much health to really work with. No, that won't work. He doesn't have enough health to work with Kraken Shell. And yeah, you see here Gigolo already moving in. Actually, they've thrown in a counter ward already from the die. I'm not actually checking if there was a ward down in the first place. Yeah, and Lich has made his way up to the top lane, trying to just help out, protect the tide. There's a stun. Is there going to be a shackle? There's a cold feet. I don't, it's not going to latch on. Lich will be okay. He's got a fair bit of regen as well to keep himself nice and healed up. But yeah, this tide is just going to get constantly harassed, and you never know when that fissure, cold feet, and shackle shot is going to be coming in. Bottom lane, we see Enigma vs. Lone Drew. Lone Drew being played by AABF. That's actually a Chinese player who's recently joined the ICE roster. Um, he, he played for the WE Dota 2 squad, um, the World Elite, and he's now playing with ICE. So he's, this is his first appearance for them, and he's going to be playing that Lone Drew. Uh, I, I think it's Enigma. I'd say Enigma can deny a bit better. does have the Edelons, although Lone Drew will be looking to farm some of those Edelons up to sort of keep his gold permanent, not getting too much. Too denied by the conversion. Yeah, well, I noticed the Edelons have been harassing 
the crap out of the bear. He's already forced the bear to respawn. Has been hitting him really damn hard, just trying to keep it out of his face. And now Lich just spamming a little bit. Tyner has already had to pop his self. And I'm just wondering, almost, does that actually block that pull there? I'm not dead sure. I need to actually check the radiuses on the block camps a little bit later. Find out exactly where you can place those wards. But Indeed, but not really giving away his Eidolons at the moment. Seems to be doing okay at controlling him, keeping him alive. Although, here comes the bear. Going to move in, harass a little bit. And Enigma now flat out him. And it hasn't... Oh, he's actually moving in. Moving back in. Taking a fair... I don't think that was the right choice. Taking a fair bit of damage there. From that Yeah, bear. so far at bottom, Enigma, Enigma's been struggling. I mean, often Enigma should be leading the CS from the start. Because that's when he's got the conversions. But he's only on 5 CS with the 4 denies. Lone Druid already up to 11 CS. So, Lone Druid... Um, is the one in control of this lane, and that's the problem for Enigma. Enigma needs to get that soaring up as quickly as possible, and right now he is not farming all that well. I mean, considering he's used conversion a couple times, he should probably have a bit, but slightly better CS, as mid lane Tyranny is up to 11 CS of his own, but Shadow Shaman not really being denied much farm by, by, by the dual lane, so Shadow Shaman looking okay here. Yeah, well, he's picked up a bottle already. He'll be ready to start controlling the runes as soon as he wants, although obviously having some Muffin Man around to just sort of race him to the runes. Every time he does, he's going to have to really worry about either leaving the life alone to pick up a bit of farm or grabbing those runes. Now, it's a Muffin Man heading bottom side. Like, okay, there's a bit of a gank tapped up on top. Oh, T-Duck's very low. Has popped a sow, though. Bruce Lee diving in with the help of Gigolo, but here comes the Titan. He's going to go Anchor Smash up, though, at the moment. First Blood going to Lich, getting the kill on Bruce Lee, and now it looks like they're getting a second kill on this AA. Unless he, oh, he's only got Ice Vortex up. He doesn't have enough the Cold Feet. will be ready, though. The Fissure is up, and he's popping the Clarity. So they have Fissure and Cold Feet, but definitely AA needs to get out. Ty could maybe try and block him in. He's doing some blocking. Is there going to be a TP back in from Lich? It doesn't look like it. And without a gush, AA should be okay here. It's and that will... Uh, I think... Oh, Fissure on the wrong side. I think he would have been okay anyways. Yeah, we saw that he actually escaped the Cold Feet lock-on. And uh, yeah, that, that went in big play's favor. I mean, they got the first blood. The, the power shot finished off the uh, Lich, but Lich getting the right click in first. So ooh, big play's going to be happy Race with that. Race to the rune. Can he get the runes him up? And man, snaking the haste run out from underneath B-Boy. B-Boy now in a little bit of trouble. Going to be harassed down here. He's got Ether Shock. He's got level 3 Ether Shock up though. So Zim Muffin Man will need to back off. They might just pop a salve and just run straight back in. Who knows? No, he is just going to back off. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Lone Druid has gone up. He's up to 20 now. He's doing pretty well. Enigma, on the other hand, 10 and 6. Doing... Yeah, could be worse. Could be worse, but definitely struggling still just a little bit. Lich is on 1 and 1. And I'm just trying to check how well Tidehunter is doing. Tidehunter has picked up his Basilius already. I'm expecting to go for that fast pipe, although we will find out. We will find yeah, out. Yeah, he might pick up the Arcane Boots first, or but he definitely wants some HP regen. So picking up a couple of rings will definitely... Uh, be very useful in this top lane. May probably might not finish the full pipe, but yeah, Arcane Boots another sort of crucial item to get on that Titan. That'll help his entire team out quite a lot. As Tyranny at mid lane, yeah, he's farming well. I mean, up to 22 CS, so he's on par with this with this lone druid. And it's going to come down to who is the better push mid game. And here we can see a gank on bottom. Ventral Spirit is there. Easy kill on bottom. The Enigma Ventral Spirit. And that was an important gank because lone druid was farming very well in this bottom lane. And you can see Lycan at mid has not been touched. I am very surprised he stayed there that long, like just trading, like he was trying to trade bear hits for Edelon hits, and he honestly wasn't winning, like the Edelons en masse, especially since they'd, con they'd split into six, they were hitting way harder than the bear was, he was really hoping for a root proc, which I'm pretty sure, yeah, he's got a level three bear, he's got roots up and running, he was really hoping for a root proc that did not come, and in the end that yeah, smoke gang from VS bringing him down. Yeah, either way, he was, just wasn't expecting the VS. He didn't get the root, but he wasn't going to die just to the solo Enigma. But then, one of those things where VS comes in, oh, look, 100 HP Lone Druid, that's an easy stun, easy kill. And now the dual lane has switched to mid. They're going to go on Tyranny with the Serpent Wards, and the Shackle comes in a bit late. Tyranny should be okay here. Yes, the Serpent Wards not going to do enough damage. And that was uh, a bit of a wasted use of those Serpent Wards. Not going to get a tower, not going to get a kill. And Zim Muffin Man going to take over this mid lane while the Lycan goes up, heals himself up. So yeah, another another good trade for big players is they get a kill at bottom and find themselves evading a death at mid lane. Yeah, well he go away for the war trap, didn't quite succeed. If he'd gotten that war trap, definitely would have been worth it. Would have got that kill with great ease. Wind running now under a little bit of pressure. Time I could try and jump her in a second. What's he gone for? He has gone for the anchor smash build, has picked up one in crack shots well. Oh. Man gets fissure blocked and Shadow Shaman coming in from behind. Gets a little free kill there, but that's just on the support hero, so not the most important kill for them as uh, they do need to start taking some towers, getting some kills on these key heroes, such as the Lycan, such as the Enigma. Tidehunter at top, getting close to level 5, needs, needs and he definitely wants that level 6 ultimate. Windrunner 
pretty much free farming has 30 CS. Phase boots up. We'll probably be looking to get that quick mech up. And oh, Urshake is down the bottom lane, searching for a kill. He has roamed all the way here from mid. Enigma's a little wary, holding back, actually denying his own creep there with the conversion. I think it's hoping they can get a good block off, and the bear might move him for the kill. But it looks like the creep wave is going to get pulled back. They're going to see the vision. No, it pulls back once again. It's pinging though, saying they want to get it. Topi with the root proc. Here it comes. Here's the vision. Going to try and buy some type of there. Can he get a root proc off? One more hit. No. Enigma defending himself there with the Malifa. Smart move, I believe. Just barely sneaking away. They're going to pop the salve and then come straight back into the fray. Meanwhile, though, Zimuffin Man has roamed top. Looks like they might try and set up a kill. There's a silent AA. They might go from here. Yeah, here comes the magic missile. The vision being spotted up there. Tight under moving. The gush goes down. The stun goes down. The shackle is on top of Cynical. Cynical, though, in some danger. He's probably going to go down. He gets locked down by Cold Feet. One more attack. He goes down to Windrunner. She tries to wind run out, but can we see another stun here from Zimuffin Man? Here it comes. Magic missile bringing them down. It's a two for one. And I think worth it in the end there for uh, yeah. the dire side, just because they got the extra experience there on the on the Tidehunter. Yeah, just just going to their support heroes, uh, they didn't get the experience for the Tidehunter for the Windrunner kill, but um, I mean, they went to their support heroes, that's going to help them out, get up some nice early items, as it may be the Lich who will be building this mech. And uh, I, I think Tidehunter could have maybe, if they played a bit different, they could have got the kill without losing the Tidehunter. Because Windrunner got the Tidehunter kill, it cost Windrunner her life, so not the best trade for her. In the end, big plays looking pretty good here. We see Lycan in jungle has gone for a quick medallion, has Tranquil Boots as well, but those are just going to be uh, torn apart to use for the Vlads later. Um, just nice early on, uh, early item as this Serpent Wards at mid lane. Ice want a tier 1 tower. It's, it, I mean, it's 8 minutes in, 9 minutes in, and we're going to see Tyranny. Ooh, not going to go in as the whole feet was there, Cynical TPing in, and they're going to defend this tower. And she dives back in now, going to try and get those last couple of hits on B-Boy. Not going to happen though, they really needed the Ravage, which again, Tidehunt is still in level 5, and it, like you said, doesn't have those Arcane Boots up yet, so really doesn't have the mana to basically make use of it. And now we've got an Invisible Raster moving in, he's going to try and flank Tyranny here, he could get him too. Here he comes, going to shackle from behind. Oh, just in the, doesn't even need shackle. Fissure, eat the shock, slides out for Tyranny. Good gank there for us, exactly what they need to keep that Lycan under control. Yeah, uh, that's that's going to slow down his farm quite a bit as uh, Lone Druid trying to catch up himself. He's up to 50 CS, has the phase boots up on his main hero, and with that, he's just going to start probably farming straight for that Relic and Radiance, which we'll be looking to get up around the 15, 16 minute mark as uh, at the mid lane. The ESAA still just trying to make sure this Shadow Shaman is protected. Tyranny may be going to just sort of resort to farming away in the neutrals a bit, although he is TPing back to mid lane. He could go into the neutrals for a bit. I think he might be a little bit worried about that. Yes, has been pretty active. He's been around quite a few lanes. So I like that from him, the fact that he's gone, you know, I don't need to be in this lane anymore. I can just go with someone else. Somewhere else, help out. And also, Titan is still under a lot of pressure up top. We're not doing a good job of keeping him under control, making sure he doesn't get that fast blink or whatever he's going for. Tyranny is currently sitting on 39 and 9. He's a little bit behind. Not on gold standard CS, but... It's doing all right. It's doing all right. Meanwhile, Silo Bear, though, what's he sitting on? Sitting on 51 and 15. Silo Bear doing very well indeed. Has picked up the quick phase boots on himself, and he's given the Spirit Bear. He's currently given him a stout shield just to help. I think just to help out with the Eagle on Harass. I just saw a smoke up though. Where did that come from? Uh, it's the Muffin Man in the bottom lane has gone with the smoke. Might be trying to set up this kill here. Enigma has got Black Hole up and running. They could go for this kill. Here comes the... Oh, gives the vision there. The Malefist is on top of Magic Missile incoming. There it is. Going to catch him. Tries to transform. Transforming now. Not being interrupted because he can't... Black Hole though, not dropping it. Just because I guess he realized, mm, I'm not going to do enough damage. Yeah, and Lone Druid surviving that game. They got a bit fogged by those trees there. And uh, that should have been a straight, fairly straightforward kill. But Lone Druid getting the time in to pop his ultimate. And once he's in ulti form, he gets so damn tanky. I'm, I'm very surprised that Zimuffin Man actually came head on instead of using the trees to flank. Like, he came in, and like you said, like, Lone Druid saw him and quickly reacted, ducked back into the trees, cut line of sight, AA there, ulting top, killing exactly one lone creep there. <laughs> Although, if he'd hit tight under, it may, may have actually taken him out if he'd been comboed with a power shot there. Yeah, that probably would have done enough damage. Tide is now up to level 6, so maybe Big Play is going to look to use this Ravage to sort of net them some sort of advantage, get a tower kill of their own. It took a couple attempts, but Shadow Shaman at mid uh, finally does manage to take out the T1 tower as bottom lane TP in from Windrunner, misses the shackle shot, and it looks like get lost, the Enigma will scurry away as now three heroes at bottom. I think Ice just want to start taking some towers, and that's going to help get that relic even quicker on the Lone Druid. 
Uh, this is smart from Lone Druid. Having that, well, transforming back before popping the health potion, it will heal more health that way if you just transform back into the bear form. But there we go. Oh, Enigma in some trouble. Chain Frost gets dropped, but it looks like they're both going to go. One more hit. Lich goes down. It's a double kill. Chain Frost still bouncing, but not doing enough damage to bring down anybody. There are too many creeps, too many minions there, and it just bounces ineffectively amongst them. So Spirit Bear gets really summoned. It's going to beat down this tower. Yep, and uh, they may even look to take a second tower. No, they're going to back off here. Um, this Shadow Shaman Ward's up. Going to be back up in five seconds. The Muffin Man, the lone defender at bottom at the moment. But yeah, they're backing off because Tyranny is pressuring away at this mid-tier one tower. He has forced to pop a fissure. And he's going to be looking to defend this right now, though. Ice up to 4k gold lead. So getting sort of pulling away with a couple tower kills and also a couple nice ganks. Especially that nice double kill at bottom we just saw. Yeah, that was fantastic for them. Also, they're up to about 2k experience lead as well. And currently, what's his time? Like, he really wants to get some items up and running. Currently, what's his... G oh, wow. 156 GPM. He has really been struggling in that top lane. Definitely not farming half as much as he wanted. 20 CS at 13 minutes in. Definitely quite far behind. Urshaker, on the other hand, though, is uh, doing pretty well. He's picked himself up his arcane boots. In fact... Oh, I think, there's, I think they might not like it. I think they know, oh, they're saying, let's go and invade the jungle. Check out what's up here. Although the wolves have spotted the Rasta. And like it knows, he might be under a little bit of pressure. And Shadow Shaman does have the Blink Dagger, so that's going to give him a nice initiation and really help maybe pick off some heroes and sort of lead the charge. And you've got the ES Fissure to back, to back Shadow Shaman up if they decide to sort of return fire. Although you do have to always worry. The Tide Ravage is going to be the key spell here for big plays. If they've also maxed out the Anchor Smash now. Yeah, the Blink is just so damn good on Rasta. We saw even a support Rasta yesterday. Ehome's support Rasta proves so crucial in shutting down Burning's anti match Just an ability to blink in it and immediately pop off that Hex before they have a chance to react. So it's going to cause all sorts of havoc for Lycan. Or maybe, like you said, even just, you know, Hexing Titan while they're busy beating up somebody else and just chain disabling with that. But right now, the Radiant busy pushing this top tower. Looks like the Dire will just try to counter push me and get rid of... Oh, it's pretty low. Shadow Shaman actually taking out Enigma in the bottom lane. Drop wards on top of him by the looks of it. As now the AA ultimate coming into mid. Earthshaker could take this. Does he have his ultimate up? He's got Echo Slam. If this lands, the Echo Slam goes down. Does it manage to hit Cynical? Cynical's going to go down to Tower Hits, though. He gets cleaned up. Lich getting cleaned up by the... Oh, what was that? Frost Ice Blast hitting him. And now Windrunner giving chase to Muff Man. Power Shot doesn't... Power Shot going through. Doesn't latch, though, the Shackle. Fissure going to clean him up before he can suicide on the neutrals. Nice work there from ES. Great coordination from Ice. And this is starting to look kind of troublesome for uh, big yeah, plays. Ice uh, comboing very well. Tyranny are going to pick up a solo kill on top. The AA does go down as uh, Shadow Shaman actually denying their mid tier 1 tower. So, yeah, big plays yet to really use this Lycan effectively to get some sort of mid game push going. He's got his lads up now, but uh, so far, Tyranny not getting all too involved. May look to try sneak Roshan, just get his team some gold, get that Aegis up. Uh, but, yeah, definitely Ice with all the momentum in their favor. ES 1200 gold, going to be getting quite a quick blink dagger at this rate. I mean, 17, 18 minutes if he continues at this rate. And big plays, their support here is Lich, VS, not really um, getting too involved. They are trying to get some wards up for their team, but at the moment, big plays falling behind. This is definitely going to hurt, especially since they ha they really want to get that mid-game mid uh, push happening, because once that Silo Bear starts rolling, it's going to be very, very difficult for Lycan to stop him. I was going to say, we haven't seen Enigma pop a black hole. He hasn't really had a good opportunity to do so, so hopefully we'll see them crack one of those out pretty soon. There are four die members rolling bottom. They could try and take out this lone druid. There he is, transforming, just realizes he's in some trouble. Transforms just to gain the health. The Rasta jumps in, gets down the Hex, gets down the Aether Shock, although here comes Titan. The Fisher goes down, covering their retreat. And they will be able to back up successfully. Reinforced reporting. AA is now here. Windrunner still. Actually, no, I think she, oh, she's in base by the looks of it. The Ice Blast goes through, does catch an Enigma. The question is, can they get some damage yet? Aether Shock, Blink and Aether Shock. The mobility from Rasta right now is fantastic. They've still got the wards up. Here we go. Get a Hex, get a Shackle as well. Oh no, just either Shock. Who needs a Shackle when you can just kill the Aether Shock? <laughs> Zap. Yeah. Down, Taser dead. And meanwhile, Winner are holding off the push, or trying to hold off the push on the top lane. Well, meanwhile, the Dire are going to have their bottom lane wrecked, I think. Yeah, absolutely. They don't even need those certain words to push at this point. I mean, he's got them up, up to level 11 now already. And uh, this is kind of the Shadow Shaman play, which used to be so, so popular. When Dota 2 was the first team, we were seeing Shadow Shaman solo mid, like, every second game. Uh, it seems like complexity. Even the, all the big European teams love that Shadow Shaman solo mid, and this is just how it would it, it would be used. Arcane Boots, Blink Dagger, look to push... Look and they get kills and just be very, very aggressive. Maybe going to go to that. I think the net is deteriorating all of a sudden. Oh. Very quiet. It looks like the Muffin Man gets jumped. Oh! 
Oh, that's got to suck. Just respawning, popping out of your base, and then immediately getting slammed by a blink combo there. So, uh, much God, he's still with me. I know right. I, that. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you now. It just it just cut out for a second. It was just like stuttering a bit. Not sure what went wrong. Yeah, another kill going nice as well. Is that? I mean, there's just some treads up on AA. I mean, that's sort of this is weird AA build. Just treads and nothing else. But uh, right now, Ice, they've got the Radiance up on the Lone Druid as well. This is going to get very hard for big plays to fight them with this Radiance in play. Yeah, and I think they've decided, you know what, the Bear's not even... Oh, wait, she's going to give it to the Bear now? Yeah, okay, the Bear's been given the Radiance. He was carrying it on the Druid himself. And there's a possible gank on top. Lycan moving up here, going after Windrunner. Well, they might just try and chase her off. Pops down the... Pops down the Medallion, but decides not to pursue. As meanwhile, mid tower being pushed, Serpent Wards is down, the Radiance just burning away at those creep. I'm kind of thinking about it, but you see, he was, it looks like he was trying to get that pipe, has picked up a cloak, but just really doesn't have the mana to use his spells right now, it's just so costly for him, 270 just to pop Gush, just to pop Ravage as well, and they're, gonna, they're just going to sack this tower, they don't have Lycan here, Lycan's still farming top, I think they're making, the radio, they're making motion saying gank this guy, then push, Lycan I think about, to, yeah there we go, porting out, I was about to say, if you didn't see this coming, would have uh, really suffered bad from that. As he yeah, and he has on him. 2k gold, he just had that blink dagger up very, very soon. I think Shadow Shaman is going to leave him this couple of creeps here. Yep, that's going to be his blink dagger now in 70 gold, as it looks like Ice want to push this tier 2 tower. And I don't think Big Place have the items or the levels to actually fight this. I mean, no, no link on Enigma. He's going to be going for a mech just to give his team that survivability. Even like needs a BKB, they're going to look to steal Roshan. This is a... This is smart. I mean, they, they can't really defend top, so they're going to use their time to take out Roshan, but it looks like Ice know what is up and may look to try and stop this. Top well, well, they know what's happening. They've got the wards there. AA now just you know, skulking around. I think he's getting ready. BS has spotted him, throws down a ward to cover them to spot what's going on. And the, now the Ice Blast moving. He's going to cause some damage. He's going to force T-Duck to back out. And Nigma actually getting jumped. I'm not sure where he got... Oh, he got taken out. Up by the front rail, but mid racks, the power shot's going through the swap out. Gigolo is stuck inside the rosh pit. Lycan grabbing the Aegis before he can do anything. I thought for a second there, Zimbabwe man might have swapped him in so he could steal the Aegis just to destroy his team. Lich now very low, another power shot, four starting out from Winter. The Ravage gets popped, did not do a whole lot, only hit the Earthshaker. B Boy now still in the mix, has a bit of mana up, about to get his boots to pop again. And he's going to chase down single by the looks of it. We've lost Lich, we've lost Enigma. And now Cynical in control, Fishy going down again, Lycan not really able to do all, it looks like he's just going to pop back to base, and they're losing the top racks. The Silo Bear just stayed on target, stayed on the push up top racks, and now he's taking it to the tower, oh wait, he's actually backing off, I don't think he needs to back off at the moment. Actually now he does, there, yeah, there are a few people coming. He's going to leave that longer there, yeah, the Enigma of the Lycan coming on in, they can stop that push, they can't really kill him all that easily. But yeah, Lycan has the Aegis, um, Swapping almost helped the AA pick up the Aegis, but uh, it did manage to get the kill there, but... Meanwhile, with Enigma getting picked off at mid, and Lone Druid just pushing away at top, I mean, Big Plays find themselves in even more trouble, although they do have the Aegis now. They need that BKB up on Lycan. They just, they can't fight, and that's causing them a lot of problems. And now Blink Dagger up on ES as well. Level 2 ulti with the Echo Slam. Man, this is going to be very, very hard for some sort of comeback. Yeah, especially since they don't have that pipe up and running yet. And Tidehunter's still trying to buy it. He's got one. In fact, I think he might have just deviated. He might have gone, you know what, I just need, I just need some stats. I just need some uh, defensive items. He's picked up a bracer as well. But I think he may just try and finish with the pipe. Because, I mean, that team definitely needs a lot of magical damage coming out of the Radiant side. Very, very painful. And currently, Silobear has bought another... Oh, he's bought the Hyperstone. It's on the Spirit Bear at the moment. Really giving that bear some good loving. And now the Lycan in a little bit of danger. Well, going to be beaten up anyway. Chased up from the top lane. Nobody else going to come up there and help gank him. Everybody else busy threatening this mid lane. Rasta has got the BKB. Oh, this is... I think this is pretty much it. Unless they can land a really good black hole, ravaged black hole combo. I, and maybe a chain... Throw in a chain for us for good measure. Otherwise, I think it's pretty much lights out for big plays at the moment. Yeah, they need to get that big blank hole coming into play, but maybe he's just going to not, not finish off the mech and go for that blink there. That could be what they need to make something happen here. But right now, Ice, and all pushing towards the top lane. BKB up on Shadow Sham. They've got the blink on ES. I mean, they've got all these big key items up. We see even a gem up on the Ancient Apparition. And Lone Druid, with the Radiance, with the Hyperstone, could just focus down the racks. Oh, yeah, sure can. He might even just use the bear. I mean, we saw this before, just using the bear just to move up and just, yes, yeah, just... Have the bear up front, just get it to do most of the work, just threaten, and basically force the diet team to move up and engage, get off their high ground, just really 
pull them out of their comfort zone. And he's done a lot of damage, although the bear now getting stunned and hammered. There, there we go, Serpent Wars have been thrown in. The Chain Frost going in as well. The Big AB being popped. Tide Hunter in some serious trouble. Also, Tyranny about to get locked down if he's not careful. Mech being popped by the Dark Ice Blast is coming and getting hit. Enigma, he will go down. Doesn't even get to pop his black. I don't think he's got to use it once so far. As looks like VS getting it cleaned up. The Hex now. The Blink in the Hex. Tide, oh, Lycan getting it taken out. He does have the Aegis though, but it's not really going to matter at the moment. The Rax is getting cleaned up by the Creep as well as Wards. Getting shut down, getting locked down, nothing you can do. I don't know, Gods, have you seen one black hole so far from Enigma this game? I don't think he has even had it. I don't think he's had any chances to use it. Just the, a, the, the play from the Winner and the ES has been so spot on, locking him down. Even Shaman Shaman has jumped in at the perfect times, and with that BKB there, it was just so easy to prevent Enigma from getting involved. And now with Top Rax down, they're going to swing to mid. This is... A lone group pushing potential now. They've got the mech up. They haven't gone for the plant, but they haven't really needed it because the Serpent Wards have given them that little buffer they needed to help push with. And now double racks, or quadruple racks, as uh, the lone druid is going to finish this off with the help of Winner. And they're going to go in. T Duck the Leaf will get instantly popped. Enigma looking for a black hole though. He might get it. The Ravish has already happened, and now he's in some serious trouble. He's being procked. He's had the Ice Blast procked, and Power Shot as well. Might just sneak away. Rasta gets cleaned up, but at this point, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. A Shadow Shaman just buying back now. He may even just... I think I think they're just going to back up. They decide, you know what? We've got, the, we've got what he came for. We've got a Tower. We've got a Rax as well. No need to just overextend and give away a few free kills. Yeah, absolutely. They Shadow Shaman actually bought back, so they want to just keep on pushing. Take out me now. The wards will be up in about 10 seconds. As we do see, um, Lone Druid, I believe, will have finished off that um, Assault Crash. Um, his bear has died, so he can't resummon that for another 15 seconds. But at the moment, uh, big place, very under farm, very under level. Gold Graph up near 20k difference between the two teams. XP as well, 15k difference as big place. I think it is going to be almost time for them to uh, sort of exit the stage. Yeah, well, I mean... As it is, we've got to sit here anyway, otherwise the GD guys get mad at me. But as it is, it looks like oh, they're yeah. going to try and keep fighting. They're going to try and keep fighting, and, you know, why not? Why not? As a bear now, it looks like he's trying to grab some more stuff. Oh, no, he's going to sit there. Oh, change to transform now. Move in. Looks like they're going to take this mid-race. Oh, Hex. Blink Hex. There's the Serpent Wards. Shackle as well. Echo Slam struck there. And now there's a Black Hole. Finally catching three heroes or two heroes and a bear right about now. Enigma challenging that and doesn't get interrupted. Chain Frost bouncing around. We've lost Urshake. Doesn't really matter, though. Enigma goes down. Both of them have popped their big ult. Lycan very low. Has to back up. Same for Tide Under wherever he is. Lycan gets cleaned up. I've lost track of Tide I think he might already... Oh, he's porting back. He's got a port back in his base to the mountain. Lich goes down as well. <laughs> Man, that's <laughs> that's a loss of map control when you've got to pour it out of your base. As Tony wants a shout out to Chups once again. They love their Chups, apparently. It's like in has everyone, everyone loves a bit of fish and Chups. But uh, yeah, they call GG. Midrax goes down. They're going to get the bottom as well. And Ice, they're continuing their streak of dominance. They they have not lost a game since I've seen them. The qualifier, the qualifier they didn't lose a game. Here they are beating... Was it Mineski and now up against? No, it was Dreams. Big Giggles play. beat Mineski. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Beating Dreams and now, oh, beating Tong Fu as well. Yeah. So being one of the Chinese teams and now up against big plays, a relatively unknown Australian team, but with some former MCD players, a former Absolute Legends player, and here they are. GG is called. They're going to disconnect from the game and. I know this is just been a top performance from Ice. I know, a lot of people in the chat right now are giving big plays a lot of flack, but honestly. I, just, I, don't, I wouldn't blame them, because right now, Ice, like you said, they've been looking so damn strong. Like, you bring up a good point. They haven't lost a game, and they beat Tong Fu. Tong Fu have some really damn strong Chinese players on their team, so... I mean, honestly, going to this match, you would almost even... You would probably consider Ice to be the favourites, just based on recent performance, and the fact that big players yeah. haven't had a chance to really get warmed up and play a match this entire tournament. No, I definitely think big, that Ice would have been the favourites here. Um, and, I mean, they've been playing more together as a team for a lot longer, playing consistently, scrimming, as we're going to see, Ravage at mid. It looks like they will... No, they're not going to get the win runner here. As, yeah, this is just a bit of fun and games at this point, as there's nothing really big players can do to turn this around. And, yeah, they do get the Enigma. But, yeah, no, I agree. Um, Ice were the favourites here, and uh, they're showing why they are one of the favourites. For me, they're definitely... They came through the qualifiers, but they are looking to be one of the teams who could potentially finish off very high. Top three, top five, I don't know what, but I think they'll be one of the top-placing teams. I honestly... I think... I will be honestly shocked if Ice doesn't make it through in, in the top two in their group. I will be very, very surprised if they don't make it through at this point in time. Blink out there from ES. Looks like they're just going to... Oh, somebody's going to try and like him because he's DC'd already, I think. Bruce Lee not happy about something. I don't know. 
But do you think there's anything Ice, I mean, not Ice, uh, Big Plays could have done differently here? Because I don't think they were massively outdrafted, it was just mostly being outplayed. I think, yeah, it wasn't, the, the draft itself was okay, but I think the way they landed it was a bit awkward. I mean, they had the Lich who started at bottom, ended up going top. They had a dual lane mid with the Lycan. I think Lycan does not do all that well in that dual lane mid. He would have been better off in that top lane with the support coming from, I mean, Lich and VS, or the Titan and the VS. Um, some sort of Lycan tri lane. But, and also, I think Enigma at bottom did not do as well as he could have. The lone druid was just outplaying him at that bottom lane. And in the end, uh, big plays did not could not deal with the Malaysian powerhouse that is ICE. A lot of these, I mean, Malaysia, ICE, Orange, and UFC, so many strong teams coming out from there. Indeed, indeed. Anyway, guys, you've been watching the Gearbox Dota Masters tournament. This has been ICE versus Big Plays. Now, stick around because we've got more games coming up very soon.